This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who, hungry, who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from anyone who takes away your coat... Do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. May be seated. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. This is All Saints Sunday, the day on which we remember those saints who once lived among us. Those saints we loved because perhaps they worshipped right here with us and taught us so much about what it means to be a disciple of Christ. We remember those saints we loved because they raised us, or we were raised up by them, or we raised them as our own. Perhaps the loved ones we remember were our parents, or our spouse, a sibling, dear friends, or one of our children. We give pause to remember them and give God thanks for their love in our lives. Some of us still grieve the loss of these saints as their deaths have left a hole in our lives, an emptiness. So today we gather, face that emptiness together, and remember. We both remember our loved ones and we remember, come together we attach as a community of faith, as we allow ourselves to let the saints teach us about living and what it means to be a faith community that follows the teachings of Christ. When I meet with grieving families, my purpose is to get them to talk to me about their loved ones what they will always remember about them, what stories they love to tell about them, uh, what stories their loved ones love to tell about them, um, and what their loved one taught them about faith, about being a disciple of Jesus. I will share with you that it is always that last question that is the hardest for most church families. Unchurched families tend to be more spiritual than religious, and so they respond like, well, um, he believed in God, rather than she modeled a life of Christ, and this is what I learned from her about being a disciple of Jesus. So I wonder, have any of us given thought to what others might say about us when we die, about what they would say about our faith in God through Christ, about how we practice or struggled with practicing 
forgiveness, grace, and mercy with those who truly tried our patience. If we haven't given thought to what others might say about us when we are gone, perhaps today is a good day to give that some thought. On this All Saints Sunday, we remember the saints of the church who died this past year. And this past year, six members of faith, of this community of faith, died and joined the church triumphant. Um, they were Henry Brazier, Hal Talbot, Mercedes Graber, uh, Gisela Naylor, Carolyn Brazier, and Grace Wolf. Some of the funerals were held here in the sanctuary. Others were held elsewhere. And I will share with you the reality that the impact the pandemic had on the church as a whole with a big C, not just this church, this congregation, but the larger church. Um, it impacted the when and how we celebrated the lives of members who died, um, the ways in which we sought to support families in their grief, the ways in which the community gathered or remained scattered during those times of loss. It truly impacted the way in, we, in which we lived out or into that scripture uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which reads, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the one spirit. But God has so arranged the body that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. The reality here at Faith is that up until about eight months ago, the way that this community grieved for the past two years was vastly different than it was pre-pandemic. And again, vastly different since. And what we lacked in that interim time, that time between shutdown and when mask mandates were lifted, was that sense of community like we had before. And we have longed for that kind of community once again and each and every day. For those families who lost loved ones in that interim time, they also lost the grief support that faith communities like this one provide. Those families missed out on the hugs, the face-to-face -face spoken words of comfort and support, they missed out on those post-funeral luncheons where members of the faith community gathered around the tables, yes, to eat, but to also share the memories and stories about the loved one. And it is my hope, and I'm sure yours as well, that we will continue to find ways to support each other in our common loss of a member of this body of Christ, whether we are gathered or scattered. We should always share words of comfort and support, as well as the stories about how our brother or sister here at Faith taught us more about our own faith and called us to be better disciples, better followers of Christ. I mentioned earlier that six members of Faith died this past church year, and of those six members who died, I presided at one of those funerals and attended another off-site. The off-site funeral was that of Carolyn Brazier. For the Brazier family, this past year was a tough one. Tough one. Henry, dad, died about a year ago, and Carolyn, mom, died in early June. The stories that I remember that were shared at Carolyn's funeral involved family and friends that they would host at their farm near Brenham. Over and over, I heard how much Henry and Carolyn and all the guests enjoyed the farm 
the great outdoors, and Carolyn's cooking room. Henry and Carolyn's love for the great outdoors and providing a space for young people and old to gather was probably what gave them an idea for their legacy project. If you have ever been to Luther Hill and stayed in or sat on the porch of the Brazier Center, then you know something about the legacy that they left. Henry and Carolyn's financial support of that structure, structure has meant that hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of campers, adults and youths alike, stayed in and anchored their memories of faith-based discussions, game nights, or solitude on the porch swing, or Sabbath time away from the busyness of life in that suite of cabins. And while I never met Henry or Carolyn in person, I stand here, here as someone who benefited from their foresight, who enjoyed a good number of retreats in the Brazier Center, and continue to think of the many ways I either enjoyed the Sabbath and slept soundly that night, or enjoyed the company of fellow clergy on retreat. Then in May, I had the honor of presiding at Gisela Mailer's funeral. Hers was a tough death call and a funeral, tough funeral all around. She only had her one son, Harold, and beyond the places they worked, this was the only place where Gisela and Harold found community. Gisela knew the importance of faith and sought to make sure that she and Harold were here every Sunday. She taught Harold to pray every night, and she knew that this faith community would be a good one in which both to raise her son and know that he would be welcomed here. On the day of Gisela's funeral, I truly expected only a handful of people to be present, but that was not the case. A good number of you came because you knew Gisela, or you came to support Harold, or because you were living fully into that scripture from 1 Corinthians. If one member suffers, this faith community was there with him when he needed it most. Harold has been through a lot since his mother's death, and I would encourage you to continue to hold him in prayer as his life and his living situation continues to change. There were three other members of Faith Who Died, whom I did not know, but you, in your collective memory, did. How Talbot, Mercedes Graber, and Grace Wolf. I would invite you to remember their faces and perhaps how they lived out their faith. And even if you did not know any of these church members, I would encourage all of us to remember the saints in our lives, those who taught us about a faith in God through Christ and who showed us how to live into our faith. And then I would invite us to give some thought as to how we allow our faith to inform and transform our lives. Lastly, I would invite us to consider how we invite others to a faith in God and how we show others how life is lived as a disciple of Christ. Again, this is All Saints Sunday, a day to remember those who have died, as well as to remember how their faith shaped their living so that we can learn how to better shape our lives around our faith in Christ. Our choices about how we live faithful lives are models for others around us and will live on in the memories of those we leave behind when we die. Here again, the words from Ephesians chapter 1. I'll be reading them from the message translation, beginning at verse 15. 
That's why when I heard of the solid trust you have in the Master Jesus and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, the saints, I couldn't stop thanking God for you. Every time I prayed, I think of you and give thanks. But I do more than thank. I ask the God of Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally, your eyes focused and clear, so that you can see exactly what he is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Endless energy, boundless strength. And what is it that Christ is calling us to do? This morning, we read but a portion of Jesus' Sermon on the Plain in the Gospel of Luke. Again, they are guidelines for living a life in Christ, that we might be called saints after our death. Hear the lesson again from the message. The Blessings. You're blessed when you've lost it all. God's kingdom is for the finding. You're blessed when you're ravenously hungry. Then you're ready for the messianic meal. You're blessed when the tears flow freely. Joy comes with the morning. The woes. But it's trouble ahead if you think you have it made. What you have is all you'll ever get. And it's trouble ahead if you're satisfied with yourself. Yourself will not satisfy you for long. And it's trouble ahead if you think life's all fun and games. There's suffering to be met, and you're going to meet it. There's trouble ahead when you live only for the approval of others, saying what flatters them, doing what indulges them. Popularity contests are not truth contests. Look how many scoundrel preachers were approved by your ancestors. Your task is to be true, not popular. To you who are ready for the truth, I say this. Love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. For those of us gathered today to remember the saints, may their lives inform our living, and may the words and teachings of Christ inform our faith and our living, that one day, we may be disciples worthy of the title of saint. Amen.